Hello and welcome to another video by The Forge Cosplay. This time we bring you a set of tests to the Polyprops phones. Before we start any work we have to make sure the workplace is well lit and well ventilated. We will be using a respirator with appropriate filters for resins and solvents. We will also be using work clothes that can be ruined and latex gloves. We will be using two pairs of latex gloves to make it easier to change when necessary. The Polyprops foam samples were marked on both sides with the manufacturer's reference for easy identification. The first test was flexibility. The craft foam sample is very flexible, it doesn't take much strength to bend it or shape it. The CF65 sample is a little harder, but still easy to shape. The CF100 sample is the hardest of the three and it holds its shape for a few seconds, even without heat. The second test was resistance to acetone, to see if it is possible to apply fiberglass and polyester resin. If the foams are not altered in structure and consistency when wet with acetone, then it will be safe to apply the resin. Using a brush, a generous amount of acetone is applied in each of the samples. Then we wait a couple of minutes to see if there are any changes. To see if the samples react to the acetone, we use the unsharpened part of the blade. When we scrape the samples, we verify that they are not altered in any way when in contact with the acetone. All three samples, the Craft Foam, CF65 and CF100, absorb a little amount of acetone, which is expected because it's a porous material. Next, we made some tests for cutting, gluing and molding with heat. First, the cutting. The first sample to be tested was the CF100. It was cut all the way through in all its length. Then, some half cuts were made, which are superficial cuts to give some detail to the pieces. The procedure was repeated on the craft foam and CF65 samples. While cutting, we can see that the blade leaves some dragging marks on the foams, but this can be due to the fact that the blade is not sharp enough. The half cuts were then heated using a hot air gun. The craft foam deforms easily when heat is applied, however, heating it did not open the cuts as it happens with EVA foam. When the hot air gun is used to heat the half cuts on the CF65 sample, there are no noticeable changes. This sample does not deform with heat as much as craft foam. The half cuts are still visible, but they did not open. On the CF100 sample, heating it with the hot air gun has an interesting effect. 
the half cuts will open slightly, about half a millimeter to each side in all the depth of the cut, which can allow the adding of some interesting and intricate details to the pieces. This next test is using heat to bond the pieces of foam without the use of glues. We performed this test because we saw the Eye of Sauron Designs review on polyprop foams. On the test he made, he verified that these foams can be joined together using only heat, so we decided to try it. The first sample to be tested was craft foam. Hitting both ends of a strip of foam, it was possible to create a ring. In order to test the resistance of the bonding, we used a wrench with an approximate weight of 400 grams and hanged it from the ring. Next comes the CF65 sample and it shows excellent results using heat to join the pieces. The CF100 sample has revealed to be a bit more complicated to bond with heat, but we got some acceptable results by applying more heat, but the bonding did not resist the weight of the wrench. On this test, the sample that performed the best was the CF65. Another test, this time bonding pieces using contact glue. We took the craft foam sample and made an angled cut and then applied some contact glue using a spatula. One more time, an alert to safety. The contact glue vapors are toxic, so the use of a respirator is recommended. The procedure was then repeated on the CF65 and CF100 samples. Throughout these tests and making several cuts, it was possible to verify that the CF100 sample is a foam that is easier to cut because it is denser than the other foams. The contact glue has to dry before the pieces can be joined, so we wait for 20 minutes before passing to the next phase.
Joining the two pieces of craft foam was a little complicated because it is a very flexible foam and it is hard to keep it straight while joining it. On the CF65 and CF100 samples, joining the pieces is easier because the foams are denser and are easier to keep straight. We repeated the test of joining the pieces with heat, this time using a longer length of foam. On the craft foam sample, this was not easy to achieve because it is a foam that deforms easily with heat. Heat was then applied to the three samples to obtain a cylindrical shape in order to verify the stability of the form. To get the cylindrical shape, the CF100 sample needs to be heated on both sides, unlike the craft foam and the CF65 samples. All Polyprops foam samples keep their shape after they are cooled. The final test was applying fiberglass and polyester resin. We used roving 165 grams per square meter and 80 grams per square meter, which are the ones that we used the most on our pieces. We poured some resin into a disposable cup and added a catalyst according to the manufacturer's instructions. A thin layer of resin was applied to each of the pieces using a paintbrush. The fiberglass roving 165 grams per square meter was applied over the resin, paying attention for it to be fully stretched over the piece.
the same procedure was applied to the other samples. The 80 gram fiberglass roving was applied to the smaller pieces according to the same procedure. Using two pairs of gloves allows us at this moment to remove the outer pair and immediately have a second pair underneath them to continue our work. The paintbrush used to apply the resin was dipped in a jar with acetone and it will stay there for 24 hours. This jar has to be tightly closed. The acetone will dissolve the resin and it allows us to reuse the brush. After applying the resin we have to wait for it to fully cure. When the curing time was complete, the samples were examined. On the craft foam sample, the fiberglass and resin have a good adhesion to the foam, but not to the area that has contact glue. The CF65 sample also shows a good adhesion of the fiberglass and resin to the foam, but not to the bonding areas, both the contact glue and heat joining lines. This problem can be solved by applying a layer of resin that is allowed to fully cure before applying the fiberglass. On the CF100 sample, the fiberglass has not properly adhered to most of the piece, but once again, applying a layer of resin and allowing it to cure before applying the fiberglass can solve the problem. On the smaller pieces, to which the lighter fabric was applied, the adhesion was good on the craft foam and CF65 samples, but on the CF100 sample it was not as good, probably because of the shape of the piece and the fact that the fabric was stretched to cover the three pieces simultaneously.